welcome back to my channel so i got a few comments on my last video which was the day in the life of a teacher you guys are interested in knowing a little bit about teaching and how i became a teacher basically thanks to anyone who asked me a question and I'm gonna get into answering them now. The first question is, what way did you get into teaching? I actually studied arts when I finished my leave insert, so it was a three-year degree. I did geography, psychology, Irish, and Irish translations in first year, and then I just studied Irish and translation studies in the last two years, because you have to just pick two. I didn't know if I wanted to do secondary school teaching or primary. And that's why I studied arts, because you can go either way. I decided primary would probably be better just because of the age. After my arts degree, I applied for, there was three colleges in Ireland that you could apply for and you had to put your preference. And you went and did an interview in English and an interview in Irish. And I think it was like, you needed to get 100 out of 120 points to get in. And I think I got 99 points. So it was really, really, really tight. So I decided to apply for Hibernia, which is just, it's the same course, but it's all online. And I think it actually worked out for the better because I was able to work full time and study. It, it, Hibernia is very flexible that you go on and you decide when you want to study. Like there's no set kind of time. There is set lectures, but they're all recorded. So you can go on afterwards and do them. But yeah, the only requirements that I can remember that you needed for Hibernia, you obviously need your Irish from your leave insert. And you also needed, I think it was a 2-1 from your previous degree. It does not matter what degree you do. I think you can do anything. As long as you get a 2-1, you can go into it and you have to have the Irish. So yeah, I studied Hibernia then. Um, and the next question is, how did I find it? So I loved NUIG and I loved, that's the college I went to study arts. I loved that. It was only a three year course, which was good as well because my three year plus my two year only meant that I was studying for five years. So it wasn't actually that long compared to if you go straight into teaching, it's four years. So it wasn't actually that bad, but Hibernia was a very, it was a very tough, it was tough on you personally because instead of going into college and going to lectures, you just had to kind of motivate yourself. There was nobody kind of around to ask for advice. Like you could email lectures and stuff, but sometimes you just want the answer then and there. But it actually worked out well in the end because you became more independent. You just had to kind of trust your own mindset on it all and not question yourself and just go for it. Hibernia was tough, but it was worth it in the end because I mean, I finished Hibernia in July and I started applying for jobs in August and I got a permanent teaching job straight away. So, I mean, it got me where I wanted to be. So I'm happy about that. The next question is your favorite part of the job. It could be nothing else than the children. They're the best part of the job, like seriously the best part. I mean, I say it all the time, anytime I come into school, the first, like, you could be, you could be sad, you could be just tired, you could be in any mood, it doesn't matter. But as soon as the first kid walks through the door, you're instantly in a better mood, especially the age that I'm working with. They're four, five, six, because I have junior and senior. And like, they just have the sweetest stories. Like, they honestly just melt my heart. They're so, so adorable. They're so loving and they're so kind. They just compliment me all the time. <laughs> they tell me how much they love me. It's just, yeah. And it's also rewarding to see them progress. Obviously, when they come into school, they can't read and write. And I send them into first class. They can read and write. And it's just like, you're so proud of them, like that you started with them and like how far they've come. So yeah, that's definitely the fav my favorite part of the job. The next question is, would you like to teach abroad? I did think about teaching abroad. I was thinking about going to Dubai. I'm a bit of a home bird, so I kind of decided against it. I mean, it would be a great experience, but the summer that I was thinking about going, I am, um, went away for two weeks on a, just on a summer holiday, no working, no nothing. 
and like by the like after a week and a half I was like I can't wait to go home I'm just such a homebird and I like to be near my family I don't know maybe I'm weird but I do so yeah that's why I decided against it but I mean I think the money and all that is definitely a great opportunity to get yourself started and definitely life experience and also because I had a permanent job I didn't want to just leave it you can take a break in your career because I have a permanent job I could leave for five years and they would keep this job for me if I went abroad but I don't know I decided I didn't want to do it the next question is your least favorite part of the job my least favorite part honestly is the planning not because it's hard but because it's just so long and boring like i like planning the fun things like doing up new resources and making the classroom all nice and putting up posters and words and all that stuff but planning actually like typing out i am going to i just find that i don't know i was never really into english so i guess that's probably why i don't like that the next question is about homework so i actually I have junior and senior infants, so I do give homework to them Monday through Thursday. Obviously, I give separate homework to the junior infants and separate homework to the senior infants because they're at different levels. Their typical homework would be their reader, their blending words, so practicing new sounds, the new sound we've learned that week in a word. Then they would have maths, phonics. They don't actually have Irish homework because in juniors and seniors, they don't read or write Irish, so it's just oral. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of it. Senior infants then would have a little bit more. They would have um, an independent reader on top of their normal school reader. The next one is, do I give out treats? Yes, I do give out treats. I mean, I have different reward charts. I think I showed you in the last video, I've got a personal reward chart where they earn stickers and they get to certain levels, they get a different um, prize depending on what they get to. Then they also have the marble jars, and that's a table earns a marble. If they get to the top of the jar, they win the lucky box, and inside the lucky box are pencils, rubbers, jellies, random little things. I mean, the, the more random it is, the better, because they love it, but yeah, I do give treats. I also give treats when it's their birthday, and sometimes on a Friday, I might give everyone one jelly if they've done a, like, a good week's work, and I mean, Bless them, they always try their best, so I do give treats for that. The next one is boys versus girls, which is easier to teach. So, I mean, I don't really think there's an easier one to teach, but I do find that girls are more independent. They will sit and do it and work it out themselves. They don't really rely on you. They don't ask you for help that much, whereas boys will be like, what page is it? Can you open my book? Um, can I use your twistables? <laughs> they need a little bit more reassurance, I find. Some boys don't, so I do find girls a little bit easier for that, for that reason. Um, what age do you prefer? So this was my dream class, junior and senior infants, like any of the infants. I, uh, my final placement was with senior infants and I was so excited. Like when I heard about this job, I was like, mum, I need this job, like it's just perfect for me. It's a small school, it's the class I've always wanted. So I was so happy when I got it. But now that I've taught in this class for three years, I actually would like to kind of go up, maybe like for a second, third. I don't know if I'd like to teach fourth, fifth, next just yet. I don't know, I feel like they're, they're like, they're smart, like they're as smart as me. <laughs> I just prefer the young age. I love their innocence and their stories and just, yeah, that's why, that's why I do prefer the younger years. The next question is advice for a newly qualified teacher. When you start out, so go in early, organize your classroom, know where everything is, put up a few displays, but don't overdo it because obviously as the kids learn, you're going to be putting up what they know as they know it. You don't want to just have loads of stuff on the wall and it be irrelevant to them. So. I would do that definitely like for me organization is key if i'm organized the day will go well if i'm not organized like i should just stay at home because the day will be crazy hectic plan your day out step by step so like to the minute what you're going to do if you finish early what you're going to have as a backup i mean there's endless amounts of advice it depends on what aspect oh definitely 
be strict on the rules for the first month keep reinforcing them every single day what you expect of the children like to stay in their seats to put up their hand to listen to each other just different rules to make your life easier the more you know about the child the better it's going to be for you the closer you are to them the more they're going to listen to you and the more they're going to respect you and do everything that you ask of them so i do recommend building a relationship with them but just not becoming their best friend and the last one is early finishers so for the kids that actually finish their work early i encourage them to take out their reader the one that we're doing in school and to read that they can also take out their whiteboards i give them all an individual whiteboard and a whiteboard marker and they can practice their tricky words or their new words from their activity book because sometimes they're very good at reading but they find the writing of it that bit trickier or i've got oh extra activity sheets just left in a basket they can just take one and complete it by themselves on stuff that we've already done obviously that's all my questions i hope this was helpful and i mean that there's so much more to say and there's so many more questions but they're the only ones that um, people were asking so if you do have more questions ask me them in the comments below because I'd be so happy to help if you enjoyed this video please subscribe I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye